Hey, everybody. It's little big man Rick Bassman here for Talking Tough. Once a week, uh, we do a little uh, edition here called The Ring and the Cage, where I talk about just one story from my, uh, gosh, I hate to say it, 30 years now experience in the wild worlds of pro wrestling and mixed martial arts. Today, I want to share uh, the tale of how UPW, my pro wrestling company, took on the National Football League, the NFL, in Team Tough Man. This is uh, for the FX Network back in, uh, in 2000. So I'm at my desk one day in San Clemente or Santa Ana, I don't recall which. Uh, there were two UPW offices. And I got a call from my old boss, Rick Coolis from Event Entertainment. Rick oftentimes is credited as the inventor of pay-per-view. He uh, produced with Sheldon Saltman, Evil Knievel's Jump Over Snake River Canyon. Uh, Rick and I together did uh, Hollyfield Douglas out of the uh, Mirage in Vegas. And Rick had just done a ton of stuff on pay-per-view. Very, very, very credentialed guy in that arena. He called me. He said, Rick, I'm partnered with Art Door. Now, by the way, Correction over last week, I kept mentioning Art Door when I was talking about the UFC story and booking Ludwig Borga to go fight Randy Couture at UFC. Uh, the booker of UFC is Art Davey. The promoter of Tough Man is Art Door. So I think I got that mixed up last week a bit. And so Art Davey, booker, UFC, who brought Tony Holm and Ludwig Borga to fight Randy Couture. That's last week's edition. If you guys want to check it out. Now we're talking about Rick Coolis, my old boss, being partnered with Art Door the founder of Tough Man, and a close personal friend of my now close personal friend, Butterbean. So Rick says, hey, you have a pro wrestling company now, don't you? And I said, yes. He goes, UPW, right? I said, yes. He goes, okay, I'm glad I found that out. He goes, I might have something interesting here. He goes, you know what Tough Man is? I said, yes, I do. He goes, you know the Butterbean guy and all that? I go, yep, yep, definitely know about it. He says, well, Art and I have started a new concept called Team Tough Man. He goes, you know, like we're going to have the Crips fight the Bloods. I'm like, well, that sounds like a good idea. And he said for the first Team Tough Man, we had booked the NFL against WWF, WWE. And WWE, for whatever reason, had pulled out. They booked this thing like a half year in advance. WWE had pulled out about three weeks before... Uh, film time or, or TV time, it's a live event uh, for television. And Rick says, do you think UPW would want to step in and fight the NFL? So we go over it a bit. We find out there's 14 guys on each team that the NFL, they're all retired players, but recently retired. So they're not old. Um, and they've been training apparently in one regard or another for about half a year. And I'm like, wow, I mean, I, I don't know, I could ask. So. I get the parameters of the deal from Rick. Uh, I go into uh, our school, Ultimate University at UPW. We usually have big, big turnouts. And I said, guys, announcement. I was always making an announcement of some sort or another. So I lay out the Team Tough Man versus the uh, NFL thing. And you see guys getting kind of interested. Like it's three weeks from now, we wouldn't have a lot of time, but it pays each guy a thousand dollar guarantee. And Hands, it was amazed me how many hands went up immediately. So three weeks in advance against the NFL, who've been training for half a year, we field a team and we start training, you know, as best as we can with the facilities we have and with the time remaining and the fact that people that are there live in LA or Orange County or Inland Empire or San Diego, and we were traveling to get to our facility already as it is. But the um, we put a good team together, Aaron Aguilera, who was later uh, Jesus in WWE, uh, Mike Knox. A lot of you guys know him. Uh, the Real Deal, Damian Steele, Smelly, Mark Bell. Um, it was a pretty tough guy group for sure. Uh, Stefan Gamlin joined the team. He was in Battle Dome. He later fought Bob Sapp in uh, K1. Uh, fun guy, one of my best friends. Uh, liked his, uh, he liked his beverages, put it that way, but um, you can always count on him to throw down when the time came. Big guy, 6'6", 325, 6'7", actually, 325. So I let Rick Coolis know that we have a team. And it's then that I get my first call from Art Door, who's kind of a legendary promoter. 
And there are a couple of things I'll always remember from that first call. One is to hey, Rick, you know, I know about all this pro wrestling stuff, you know, and let me just put it this way. He goes, you know, what we do here is real. Okay. Do you understand? He's like talking to me. I'm a little slow. Uh, I mean, maybe I am, but he says, Rick, this is real. You guys are going to have to fight for real. And I said, all right, I know that, man. Everybody knows that. Don't worry about it. We're going to come to fight, you know, training or no training. These guys are tough guys. They're scrappers. You know, if I was a foot bigger and 80 pounds bigger myself, I'd be in there, but I'm not. So I'm not going to fight a 280 pound lineman. Um, at least not in the ring with gloves on. So anyway, okay, Art, no worries. It's real. Got it. He goes, here's the other thing, Rick. Uh, he says, Rick Coolis has communicated to me that you guys kind of run a tight ship there, your family, all that sort of thing. He goes, and I know you're bringing your team, but I need to ask you to pull one man off it already because I want to put my own man as your 14th guy. Now, we did run as a family. You know, typically in independent wrestling, the wrestlers move around one promotion after another, after another, after another. They have to. That's just how it works. But with UPW, our guys were kind of like our guys. It was an extended family. I really like to think of it that way. We're a tight-knit group. Um, you know, new people coming aboard all the time. That's fine. We'll welcome them in. They'll become part of the deal. But it felt weird sticking somebody on the team that we were going to meet till we got to Detroit where the event was taking place. But it's his show. He was forceful about it. He basically told me. He didn't ask me. And the guy he was putting on the team was Hard Body Harrison. It's a name a lot of you may remember. If you don't, I'll tell you more about him in a moment. He goes, and Rick, I know that, you know, this is your deal. He goes, it's your company. Uh, I know you're the captain of this team. He goes, but for television purposes, we want to put a famous pro wrestler out there as your captain. And I'm like, okay. And he goes, but don't worry about it. You know, you're, you're running it. Just, it's going to be a camera, you know, a roll. I'm like, okay, it's not very real. We want to keep it realistic. But again, it's your show, so okay. So I start thinking Ken Shamrock or Dan Severin, who are both friends at this point, and who would definitely add to that veneer of reality that that tough man was at this point like ramming down my throat, keep it real. And I reached out to Ken. Ken agreed, said he would do it, wanted to do it. And about a week to go, he was even going to try to make some practice sessions. He couldn't make it. He was on the other side of the state, but I know he wanted to, and I know he tried. But about a week to go, Ken unfortunately had to pull out. I let Art know that, or I let Rick Coolis know that. Art calls me back, and he goes, Rick, too bad about Ken Shamrock. That would have been really cool. I'm like, man, I know. I'm really sorry. I'm scrambling for another guy right now. He goes, don't worry about it. We got somebody. And I'm like, oh, who'd you get? He goes, we got the honky-tonk man. And I'm like, wow, okay. Um, I'd never met Honky before. So again, a guy who's an outsider, famous guy in pro wrestling, especially at that time. But the thing that really struck me was Art kept pushing at me. This is real. We need this to look real. And Honky is a character. I mean, forget the, not forget him, but putting aside the real guy, uh, Wayne, who's a good dude. Um, I'm like, this just screams pro wrestling. It's like anything but real, but okay. So. We fly to Detroit. We got our group. Um, I go meet Rick. I meet Art Door. I meet his daughter, Wendy, who's awesome. And we go through like all the rules and all the regs and how it's going to work. We're getting settled in. It's taking place at the Joe Lewis Arena in Detroit. Pretty amazing place. It's like a fabled, you know, storied uh, arena. So it was neat to be there. And in this rules meeting, Art says to me, he goes, Rick, do me a favor. Take a piece of paper out. He goes, write down numbers one through 14 and then rank your toughest guy to your weakest guy he goes i want to have the nfl do the same and then we're going to match it up accordingly okay so i rank it i put stefan gamlin as number one i put aaron aguilera as number two um people may not think of jesus as a tough guy he actually went and fought butterbean once in hawaii with like one week notice and took being halfway into the second round was pretty amazing so Aaron's a scrapper. I had Mark Bell, Smelly, as number three, a real boxer with real experience, a very strong, tough guy also. So the first round consisted of 10 fights. And nobody can explain how the rounds were working. 
other than to be two rounds, you know, lots of fights, a point system, and then there'd be one final match for all the marbles. How that made any sense, I don't know, but that's how Art Door had concocted it. All right, that's fine. We're there to play along and win some fights. You know, at this point, it become pretty serious for us, though, because when we got there, I'll go back to the rules meeting in a second. When we had gotten there, we heard over and over, hey, guys, this is real. You know this, right? This is not just pro wrestling stuff. And it almost became like, you know, a personal badge of honor for all of us, you know, a collective mission to do our best to make a good showing for pro wrestling, you know, representing the fake pro wrestling against the real NFL, who had trained almost half a year longer than us in real tough manner boxing matches. We want to make a good showing. So anyway, back to the rules meeting. I break my guys one through 14, and then they call out the first 10 matches. And the thing that became immediately noticeable is the guys that I had ranked as numbers one through four were left out of the mix. So they've got our number five through 14 guys fighting the NFL, but they had flip-flopped it. So like our number 14 guy is fighting their number one guy. Our number 13 is fighting their number two. So you can almost see this as a setup now. That's how we saw it then that we're to be made to look bad and lose a bunch of matches. The only difference um, on stacking the fighters and the, uh, or the wrestlers and the football players was hard body Harrison, who was art doors guy, as it turned out, he'd won some tough men deals before art put hard body up against the number 14 football player. That's how that worked out. So obviously he's trying to make the wrestlers lose, but give hard body the win. Right there, we're thinking, okay, this looks like a show that's concocted to get hard body Harrison over by having us, the pro wrestlers, UPW, get our asses handed to us and have hard body step in and save the day. So we're going to go along with it and see what happens. So hard body right away. I don't know if you know the guy. He's in prison for life now, I believe. I don't know if he's eligible for parole or not. He did get a life sentence for kidnapping and pandering he basically kidnapped and held women hostage and was selling them um you can look this up in the media it's a pretty well-known story he was um colorful uh arrogant uh selfish not an easy guy to like and he tried that with us and it didn't last long he got cold shouldered first he got cold shouldered by a very tough group of like brothers who were very close knit. And then it got a little threatening toward him because we just did not like what was going down, but more so how, or equally so how he was conducting himself. Here's an example. We made special UPW uh, warm up suits for the event, all matching, nice black, red, white, our colors. And hard body, of course, had a hard body Harrison warm up suit. So before we came out for the first end, he goes, hey, guys, you know, when, when we go out, he goes, I'm going to be out in front. <laughs> okay, sure you are. So and there's heart, there's a honky tonk man, you know, in his white sequin jumpsuit with his guitar. Definitely looked very, you know, shoot, very legitimate, right? Um, as far as real fights go. So we cornered hard body in the locker room and we're like, man, you know what? Not only are you not going out in the front of the pack, you're going to be stuck somewhere in the middle. But you're not going to go out at all unless you take that sweatsuit off and put on the UPW sweatsuit we brought for you. So, you know, if you look at the opening of the show, which is which I still have on VHS tape of all things, I'm good, dying to convert it one of these days and watch it again. But at the beginning of the show, you'll see us make our entrance with hard body Harrison in the middle of the pack with his UPW suit on. Anyway, first round goes off. <laughs> hard body. And guys, there is the every show pitbull outdoors never uh, it never fails anyway the first round hard body practically kills his opponent as expected we lost our match with the number 14 guy or 13 guy or 12 guy but after the first round it's five wins nfl five wins upw and our door comes back to me and he goes wow he even said this, maybe it was a slip of the tongue. He goes, I didn't expect that. Oh, Art, okay, all right, great. Show us what you're thinking, what's going on. Um, we told you we were to come out and fight like it's real. You, despite the fact you stacked it against us, we still split. 
He goes, okay, here's the next round. And he posts it. And once again, our top four guys are off of the list. And at this point, we're like, nah. So we had a little powwow. And I went to see him. And Art said, or I said to Art, I'm sorry. I go, Art, this, uh, this stops now. I go, Stefan and Aaron and Mark. Stefan Gamlin, Aaron Aguilera, Mark Bell. I forgot who ranked as number four. It may have been Basil Bozinas, uh, bad boy Basil from UPW, also no longer with us. Great, great guy. Um, he said, Art, these four guys are fighting. Don't care if hard body's fighting. Get rid of him for all we care. A matter of fact, we prefer if you did. But our four guys, these four guys are fighting. Put them against anybody you want to put them with. Okay, so we forced it in. Once again, hard body is given the easiest uh, opponent. That's my girl, Gogo barking. He goes, Gogo, shush. I love her more than anything, but she's very loud. Uh, hard body gets an easy win. And Stefan and Aaron and Mark all won their matches. There were only six matches in the second round. So we're now ahead on the scorecards. Um, again, I had no idea how the scoring was working, but we're making a pretty good showing for ourselves. Things in the meantime that held up, and they're so intense. You'll see this on the, the show if you ever watch it. The first of two bench-clearing brawls break out, UPW versus NFL. And I was, like, so worked up at that point. I like, threw myself into it also. And I remember getting squashed between Stefan and, like, some 350-pound linemen, which kind of put me out of the fight. But it was fun. It was fun while it lasted. And... We're sitting there waiting, and Art goes, um, hey, we got to make some adjustments. Rick, will you grab, uh, grab a hard body and honky and come on back to the dressing room? And I go, why? He goes, because we need to, like, sit down and figure this out. I go, hard body and honky tonk, man, have nothing to do with the decision-making process for UPW. And Art Door is a big, former tough guy himself. He's a street brawler, truck driving, six-foot, three-inch, 300-pound guy. Um, who carry around brass knuckles all the time. He's looking down at me. He's like, okay. I mean, not that he was in the least bit intimidated, but he knew that I was serious and that hard body and honky were not participating in the process. Well, I saw why he wanted them in the dressing room because we get in there. He goes, okay. He goes, here's what's going to happen. We're running short on time. Um, we need to finish this whole thing with just one match, one UPW match. One UPW guy versus one F one NFL guy for the winner of Team Tough Man. He said, well, Art, that's fine. Doesn't really flow with the point system you put together because we're pretty far ahead at this point. But if that's the way you want it, then that's the way we'll do it. And right then he jumps in and goes, okay, well, for NFL, we have so-and-so. And for UPW, we have Hard Body Harrison. <laughs> like, no, you don't. And he says, pardon me? I said, Art? Hard Body Harrison had nothing to do with UPW when you contracted us and when we got here. I go, in the past two days, he's now has less to do with UPW than he did before. And Hard Body is not representing us. He goes, Rick, you know what? He goes, it's my show. I'm going to do what I want. My old boss, Rick Coolis, is trying to calm me down. I was taking this pretty seriously. Uh, I took things a lot more seriously in those days than I do now. Um, not that I wouldn't be serious about this now, because I felt like it was our honor that was at stake. Um, didn't really want Hard Body Harrison coming off as our representative, which is, in hindsight, being where he is now is probably a good call. You couldn't have predicted that at the time. So, or maybe you could have. I don't know. In any case, he goes, my show, going to do what I want. He goes, please, though, I'm going to ask you. And he was nice about this. First time I really saw him polite. He goes, please, when Hard Body makes his entrance, will you guys all please come out with him and back him up? And I said, no, Art, you know what? We probably won't do that. And okay, he goes, what will we'll be, will be. And you see it on the tape. Hard Body makes his entrance. And he, it's he and Honky Tonk Man. And Honky is a good guy. He was just, you know, he was going with the flow. I understand that. Um, you know, collecting a payday. And that's, that's fine. I, I respect that. So it's hard body and honky. And then here's the next thing you see on the tape. We had decided this in the locker room. So as they're getting ready to get things staged up for the final fight, you'll see 
me and the whole UPW team enter the arena and then the ring. And we go up to, or I go up to Art. I go, you know what, man? You go, we're, we're on TV now. Now, now. now you've got a decision to make because it's going to take security and the police or whoever you have to remove this team from the ring to get your fight to happen. Otherwise, you're going to get hard body the hell out of here and it's going to be Stefan fighting against the NFL guy for the title. And, you know, Art had a decision to make and he saw that was not a, uh, a viable option. So he goes, OK, he goes, let's do this then. Let's have Stefan fight hard body and whoever wins that will be the winner. I go, how does Stefan versus hard body Harrison for the winner of pro wrestling versus football make any sense? So end of the day, um, he acquiesced. Uh, Stefan Gamlin, the German pretty boy, fought, uh, I, I don't even know the guy's name. I've got to watch the show again. He fought a big giant lineman for the NFL. Uh, Stefan won the fight and UPW defeated the NFL at team tough man on the FX network in the year 2000, proving once and for all that pro wrestlers are tougher than pro football players.